Hey everybody, this one's about commerce and the purpose of this one is to show that first of all you can be in a common law contract without being in commerce and if you uh, talk about commerce, if you go into commerce, if you do anything commercial you're bringing yourself into international law under the Unidroid Treaty and, um, and you're saying you're one of the slaves, basically. Uh, anyways, so um, let's uh, get started. So what is commerce? Commerce has many names. A common law contract is not commercial. A commerce deals only with fictitious entities, uh, and you can be in a common law contract without being in commerce. Uh, commerce is known by many names, martial law, civil law, law merchant, private international law, Roman law, municipal law, canon law. It's all, it's canon law, see Roman law is a subset of canon law, Municipal law is a subset of canon law. Private international law is a subset of canon law. Law merchant, subset of canon law. This is actually, all of this is a subset of canon law. The root of all of this law is Roman law that comes from the Roman cult and canon law. Um, this is Swift versus Tyson, 1842. There must be uniformity in maritime law. The principles of maritime laws are applicable to commercial law. Therefore, there must be uniform in commercial law. Um, Insurance is all admiralty. Anytime you're dealing with insurance, you got to understand when you're in commerce and when you're not, and when they're trying to drag you in there. Uh, there's no more reason why the admiralty should have cognizance of bottomry instruments as maritime contracts than of policies of insurance. Both are executed on the land, and both intrinsically respect maritime risks, injuries, and losses. And so... Anytime you have insurance, you're in you're in admiralty. Okay, it's contract, it's maritime. Admiralty and maritime are virtually synonymous. Um, the Fourteenth Amendment is an extension of national military powers presently used in a municipal character and enforced by municipal laws stretched far beyond their original limitations and enforced by Article One tribunals. And that's uh, Judge A. H. Ellett in his book called "The Non-Ratification of the Fourteenth Amendment." That's associated with Diet versus Turner uh, um, in, in 1968. Uh, the delegation of cognizance of all civil cases of admiralty and maritime jurisdiction to the courts of the United States comprehends all maritime contracts, torts, and injuries. Okay? And so admiralty and maritime, and so remember we just talked about it, insurance, anytime you're dealing with insurance. That's why insurance laws state statutes are actually federal statutes anytime a state statutes regulating insurance it's really it's federal the latter branch is necessarily bounded by the locality the former extends over all contracts okay so they're talking admiralty and maritime uh, wheresoever they may be made or executed and whatsoever may be the form of the stipulations okay um, which relate to the navigation of business or commerce of the sea Okay, so commerce is of the sea, number one. Number two, it's a contract. It cannot be admiralty without a contract. There's got to be a contract. And, and that's what they do is they drag you into these commercial courts and call it a contract. All the forms and modes of proceedings and causes of equity and admiralty and maritime jurisdiction shall be according to the civil law. That's why it's rules of civil procedure. <laughs> In the meantime, the civil law was the form of law imposed in the Roman Empire, which was largely, if not wholly, governed by martial law rule. Um, and so, again, that's Judge A.H. Ellett of the Utah Supreme Court in his book, The Non-Ratification of the 14th Amendment, uh, which is associated by the uh, case uh, Diet versus Turner. Uh, commercial law, it, the substantive law dealing with the sale and distribution of goods, the financing of credit transactions. Okay, so... You got to understand they're using commercial terms here, okay? Credit, okay? The security of the goods sold, negotiable instruments. Most commercial law is governed by the Uniform Commercial Code, okay? Also termed mercantile law, okay? And so there's a there's a there's a fine line between commercial law and just a common law contract, okay? And you can be in a common law contract without being in commerce. When you start talking about the Uniform Commercial Code, you're saying that you're one of the slaves. And I just cannot stress this enough. People do it all the time. They say, well, I'm a sovereign citizen. I'm the creditor. I'm the secured party. 
Okay, well, you just said that you're a U.S. citizen slave is what you said when you used that word secured party or creditor. The Roman law is the body of rules that governed the social relations of many peoples in Europe, Asia, and Africa for some period between the earliest prehistoric times and 1453 A.D. Yet the essential fact is that no present-day community consciously applies as binding upon its citizens the rules of Roman law in their unmodified form. That law is an historic fact. It would have only a tepid historical interest if it were not for the circumstance that before it became a purely historical fact, it was worked into the foundation and framework of what is called the civil law. And that's Max Radin, Handbook of Roman Law, 1927, okay? And that's cited in Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition. So the point being is, is that Roman law is a dinosaur, okay? But it's worked its way into the civil law. And so anytime you're dealing with civil law, you're dealing with Roman law. And so they assault you. They send out their hired thugs to assault you and then and then drag you into their so-called court, and, and, and that's all civil law. Whether they drag you in or you drag them in, it doesn't matter, it's all civil law. It all falls under Roman law. Roman law is voluntary. Under the Uniform Commercial Code, all debt is Roman law and includes bonds, promissory notes, mortgages, stop certificates, negotiable instruments, bank notes, all securities. And it's amazing what falls under the definition of a security. <laughs> Banknotes, a contract. A banknote resembles a common promissory note issued by a bank or corporation authorized to act as a bank. It is, in fact, a promissory note, but such notes are not for many purposes to be considered as mere securities for money, but are treated as money in the ordinary course and transactions of business by the general consent of mankind. Now, you got to understand, they're saying that a banknote in this case is a promissory note, but actually, well, I guess it could be, but um, it's really an IOU. Okay, which could be, but uh, to see, uh, uh, in the in the strictest sense, a promissory note has to have a promise to pay, and and a bank note does not necessarily have a promise to pay. Script certificates of ownership, either absolute, conditional, or conditional, of shares in a public company, or corporate profits. The term has also been applied to the United States in the United States to warrants or other like orders drawn on a municipal treasury and to the fractional paper currency issued by the United States during the period of the Civil War. They're talking about United States notes, okay? Uh, well, any kind of script, actually. Any kind of paper is script. Uh, anyways, that's Black's Law Dictionary, second edition. Person. This is the Uniform Commercial Code. Person means an individual, corporation, business, trust, estate, trust, partnership, limited liability company, association, joint venture, government, governmental subdivision, agency, or instrumentality, public corporation, or any other legal or commercial entity. Now, under the maximum law for statutory construction, that uh, because this thing is listing a whole bunch of fictitious entities, an individual is also a fictitious entity, and it's a U.S. citizen is what they're talking about, or, or a resident alien. That's UCC 1201. Um, consumer means an individual that goes back to the person, right? Defendant includes a person. A party, as distinguished from a third party, means a person. Purchaser means a person. Buyer, an ordinary course of business, means a person. That's all U.S. citizens, okay? That's all the slaves, SESTK Trust. A representative means a person empowered to act for another, including an agent or an officer of a corporation or association, and a trustee, executor, or administrator of an estate. Uh, a bank means a person engaged in business of banking. It's all corporate and uh, fictitious entities. Whenever the Uniform Commercial Code creates a presumption with respect to a fact uh, or provides that a fact is presumed, the trier of fact must find the existence of the fact unless and until evidence is introduced that supports a finding of its non-existence. So they can assume that you're one of their SSDK trust slaves until you submit some evidence, an affidavit, that says that it, you're not. That's exactly what's going on here. All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States. 
and see the so-called 14th Amendment is unconstitutional video. And, and the reason is, is that is that this is the 14th Amendment, and it is unconstitutional. It's a revision is what it is. Watch that video. It's a revision, and Congress is not authorized to revise the Constitution. A citizen of the United States is a civilly dead entity operating as co-trustee and co-beneficiary of the Public Charitable Trust, the constructive uh, Sestake Trust of the U.S. Inc. under the 14th Amendment, which upholds the debt of the USA and U.S. Inc., and that's located in the congressional record. That's actually a summary of five pages in the congressional record. If anybody's ever looked in there, uh, um, it's a summary of what's contained in those five pages. Um, June 13, 1967. Every taxpayer is a Sestake trust, having sufficient interest in preventing the abuse of the trust to be recognized in the field of this court's prerogative jurisdiction. That's Henry Bolens. And the point being is that all U.S. citizens are taxpayers, and so a U.S. citizen is a Sestake trust. Slater's protestations to the effect that he derives no benefit from the United States government have no bearing on his legal obligations to pay income tax unless the defendant can establish that he's not a citizen of the United States. The IRS possesses authority to attempt to, de to determine his federal tax liability. And so, again, uh, um, that's all for U.S. citizens. It's all Sestake trust. This is the D.C. Code, an act to establish a code of law for the District of Columbia, Chapter 56, Section 1617, located at 31 Stat 1432, the legal estate to be in the Sestake Trust. So, so this creates the presumption that it's the Sestake Trust. And, and more, there's, there's more stuff in here. This is more of the D.C. Code. This is uh, 31 Stat 1189. Be it further enacted that in an interpretation and construction of said code, the following rules shall be observed, namely, the word person shall be held to apply to partnerships and corporations, okay, fictitious entities. And this is this is, uh, uh, is in the D.C. Code, again, Section 117, located at 31 Stat 1208, that in addition to the jurisdiction conferred in the preceding section, plenary jurisdiction, that's military dictatorship, people, is hereby given to the said court holding the special term to hear and determine all questions. And so, again, military dictatorship and presumption of death, D.C. Code. And so if any person shall leave his domicile without any known intention of changing the same or shall and shall not return to be heard from for seven years, from the time of his so leaving shall be presumed to be dead. This gives them the presumption that you're a Sestake trust. Who tells anybody if they're going to leave their house? That's a, that's a bunch of garbage. They're just they're just creating a presumption that that you're dead. That's all they're doing. So now that the legal estate is in the Sestake trust, they want to create the presumption that you're dead, and, and and so then then they can go ahead and assault you with their Sestake trust. That's this is Tomlin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition, volume two, under the definition of Mort Main. Yet still it was found difficult to set bounds to ecclesiastical ingenuity. For when they were driven out of all their former holds, they devised a new method of conveyance which by which the lands were granted not to themselves directly, but to nominal fiat fees to the use of the religious houses, thus distinguishing between the possession and the use and receiving the actual profits, while the season of the lands remained in the nominal fiat fee who was held by the courts of equity then under the direction of the clergy and still under the direction of the clergy to be bound in conscience to account for his sestake use for the rents and emoluments of the state. Gee, that sounds like taxes. And it is to these inventions that our practitioners are indebted for the introduction of uses and trusts, the foundation of modern conveyancing. Well, think about it. If, if, the, uh, first of all, this is all created by the, by the Roman cult. Second of all, the courts of equity are still under the direction of the, of the Roman cult. Third, the, uh, the Sestike use is what they, they put the name in and the, the D.C. code. They can presume it's all, all the, the, uh, uh, the deeds are in the Sestike use, or they presume it is. And, and so then that's why they want the property taxes. And it's to these inventions, and, and in, in 1835, if, uh, if the uh, foundation of modern conveyancing was Sestake use and, and trust, you don't think it's going on still today? Of course it is. 
This is the Federal Tax Lien Act of 1966 at Public Law 89-719, located at 80 Stat uh, 1130 and 1131. And uh, the definition section, motor vehicle. The term motor vehicle means any uh, self-propelled vehicle which is registered for highway use. What this does is it creates a presumption, okay? So if if that code enforcer stops you, uh, then he's, unless, if there was no breach of the peace, and if, they, and if he doesn't have a court order, then then he has he is operating under the Federal Tax Lien Act because the Federal Tax Lien Act gives them the presumption that if it's registered, that it falls under there. And so they can collect some revenue. And the revenue is paragraph four. The term security means any bond, debenture, note, certificate, or other evidence of indebtedness issued by a corporation or a government or political subdivision with interest coupons in registered form, share of stock, voting trust certificate, or any certificate of interest or participation in, or certificate of uh, in, uh, certificate of deposit or receipt for a temporary or interim certificate for or warrant or right to subscribe to or purchase any of the foregoing negotiable instrument or money. Okay, and so again, that's that's what they do is it gives them the right to presume. This is all uniform commercial code. Those are uniform commercial code terminologies, debenture, notes, uh, certificate of indebtedness, negotiable instruments. That's all uniform commercial code terminologies. Unless dispaced by the particular provisions of the uniform commercial code, the principles of law and equity, including the law merchant and the law relative to capacity to contract, principal and agent, estoppel, fraud, misrepresentation, duress, coercion, mistake, bankruptcy, and other validating or invalidating cause supplement its provisions. Okay, so what they're saying is that they're bringing in the bankruptcy laws. They're bringing in all of this stuff. That's why it's 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 all crimes or commercial crimes, and that's found in the uh, in the uh, code of uh, the uh, yeah the um, oh man uh, the the um, um, the code of federal regulations. That's it. The body of learning that we call conflict of laws elsewhere is called private international law because it's applied to adjustment of private interests, while public international law is applicable to the relations between states. So the Uniform Commercial Code is private international law. This is the U.S. Supreme Court, Garner versus Teamsters. In the sense of public international law, the several states of the Union are neither foreign to the United States nor are they foreign to each other, but such is not the case in the field of private international law. The Uniform Commercial Code by the copyright's owner admission is private international law. A private law is one which is confined to particular individuals, associations, or corporations. A private law can be enforced by a court of competent jurisdiction when statutes for its enforcement are enacted. Statutes creating corporations are private acts. In this connection, the Federal Reserve Act is private law. Federal Reserve banks derive their existence and corporate power from the Federal Reserve Act. The distinction between private, public and private acts is not always sharply defined when published statutes are printed in their final form. You, the burden's on you to know the law. If you don't know what's going on, what they're talking about, then you don't know that, that, that that's really a contract, okay? Private law is contracts. It is all private law and international law, but may be referred to as private international law. And it is owned by the same people that own public law. That's found at uh, 88 Stat 243. The UCC was written and is owned by Unidroit. It is in the Roman cult, actually. It's only about 100 yards from the Holy See. And uh, this is found in Case versus Kelly, uh, the U.S. Supreme Court, 1890. To properly address public law, one must understand that it is private corporate charter that owns public law. And all, it is all statutory. Public law was converted to public policy in 1938. Policy is political, is police. All private corporations, including governments, are under public policy and are to deal only with other corporations as exemplified herein. Private man is not affected by public law. 
public policy, private law, or anything else, as long as private man does not harm another private man. He's not statutory, but lawful. And there's a difference. Public means of concerning or affecting the common unity of the people, the assemblage of private man. Private means not available for public use, control, or participation, belonging to a particular person or persons, as opposed to the public or the government. Remember, as a corporation, the government becomes no more than any other corporate person not holding an official or public position. The entire taxing and monetary systems are hereby placed under the Uniform Commercial Code. And that is not a cite from the Federal Tax Lien Act of 1966, but if you look at that definition in the definition section, that's essentially what they're saying because those, all those terminologies are found in the Uniform Commercial Code. This is Alberto Gentili, and he's recognized as the founder of the science of international law. And Gentili is one of the early writers on public international law and the first person to split secularism from canon law and from Roman Catholic theology. So, in other words, international law is a subset of canon law. And uh, he was the Regis Professor of Civil Law uh, in, uh, I think that's Oxford, um, anyways, um, and uh, he lived uh, from, uh, oh, well, he was the professor uh, 1587 to 1608. Uh, he was born in 1552. So the point being is that um, international law is a subset of canon law. And this is a little advertisement I want to insert here. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to click on the bell next to the subscribe button so that you're notified when there's a new upload. And uh, that way you can keep on top of the, the, all of the stuff that I'm putting out. I'm trying to put out a video every day, so it will be a good idea so that you can uh, be aware of what's happening. The United States pays $260,000 a year to Unidroid for the use of the copyrighted Uniform Commercial Code. The International Registry is private law of Unidroid. And Unidroid stands for the Unification of Private Law. And the website says that 63 countries have adopted it. This is all part of the UN. And it's designed to be automatically implemented. Canada and the United States have been signatories to the Unidroid Treaty for over 30 years. Unidroid website says nothing about Texas or Arizona or any of the American states or the Canadian provinces. Therefore, Unidroid application in the American states and the Canadian provinces is only in federal areas. Unidroid covers negotiable instruments, civil procedures, civil liability, secured transactions. This is all commercial. Legal status of women, maintenance obligations, contracts, banking law, transportation, leasing, franchising, hotels, insurance, um, a a anything related to marriage, divorce, to children, to uh, municipal law, and much more. Canada and the United States are signatories, and uh, to, as of this date, 63 countries have signed on to the Unidroid Treaty. See Corruption in the Courts 3 and 4 for more information. Uh, Texas is not listed. Arizona is not listed. No American state is listed. Alberta is not listed. British Columbia is not listed. Ontario is not listed. No Canadian province is listed. Therefore, anything involving motor vehicles or the courts is both commercial and federal. And therefore, it's a contract. This is their website. And uh, we'll get in closer and see how it's talking about commercial contracts and Unidroid principles. Uh, cultural property, franchising. This is another page on their website. See the header. It talks about the unification of private law, leasing, security interests, transport, banking law, capital markets, civil procedure, contracts, cultural property, franchising, hotels, insurance, intellectual property, leasing, legal status of women, maintenance obligations, movement of persons, negotiable instruments. It covers mandatory insurance for motor vehicles, anything related to marriage, divorce, and children. And uh, this is some treaties that it uh, talks about. Um, the uh, 1955 Benelux Treaty on Compulsory Insurance Against Civil Liability in Respect to Motor Vehicles. And the 1958 Convention Concerning the Recognition and Enforcement of Decisions Relating to Maintenance Obligations Towards Children. And the 1959 European Convention on Compulsory Insurance and Civil Liability in Respect to Motor Vehicles. So you know that child support uh, CPS and um, uh, Child Protective Services and that child support and that divorce is all under the United Nations. And uh, the term motor vehicle means every description or carriage or other contrivance propelled or drawn by mechanical power and 
used for commercial purposes on the highways and the transportation of passengers and property or, or property or cargo. And uh, and then it goes on. This is Title 18, United States Code, Section 31. The term used for commercial purposes means the carriage of persons or property for any fee, uh, fair fee, rate, charge, or other consideration, or directly or indirectly in connection with any business or other undertaking for profit. So you don't have a motor vehicle unless you're carrying passengers or property for hire. Matter of fact, I don't even say I have a passenger. I say I have a guest. Okay, you can have a guest. Uh, uh, so um, anyways, here's some of the... Uh, uh, the website, the Unidroit website, showing the, some of the countries that have uh, adopted the Unidroit Treaty. And so we see Alberta, Australia, not Alberta, we see Australia, Canada, Argentina, Brazil, Chile, China, uh, uh, United Kingdom, uh, United States. Uh, there's all sorts of them here. Anything in America, um, uh, Canada, United States, and uh, federal or state involving motor vehicles or the courts or the banks or finance or municipal corporations is actually federal and falls under Unidroit. There's been created a fictional federal state of XXX within a state. See Howard versus uh, Sinking Fund of Louisville. Uh, that's U.S. Supreme Court, and it's cited in the Schwartz versus O'Hara Township School District, uh, Pennsylvania case. If the common law can try the cause and give full redress, that alone takes away the admiralty. Okay, so this is this is before all these treaties. See these treaties basically they they assault you now with their admiralty, their unidroit contracts. And uh, because because it's but it's still a contract, okay? It's still got to be a contract. They got to show a contract. In Kreble's reports, it is expressly said that without a stipulation, a contract, the Admiralty has no jurisdiction at all over the person. The common law is a standard by which to ascertain what are proper cases for a prohibition to a court of Admiralty and not the civil law. And so. Uh, there's been created a, uh, actually we covered this one already, capitus diminutio, meaning the diminishing of status through the use of capitalization in Roman law. Okay, that's what they're assaulting you with is their Roman law. Diminishing or abridgment of personality or loss or curtailment of allowed status or aggregate of legal qualifications. And we have another advertisement here, announcing a subscription-based YouTube channel called Sovereignty International. The recommended cost of the subscription is currently $1.99 because it avoids the advertising only. The only power that these New World, New World Order cowards, Satanists, and they're cowards because, because they never want to face anybody personally. They want to send out their hired thugs to assault you. They'll never do it on, on their own uh, because they get their butts kicked. Um, they're cowards. They are just the lowest coward form of life there is. Um, anyways, these New World Order cowards Satanists have over us is through fraud and deception. And my agenda is to expose it for all of our benefit. And so for that reason, I can't think of anything that I would want to have on there that's exclusive. I was originally going to have exclusive material on there, but I can't think of anything that I want to put on there exclusive. So um, the um, it's going to be uh, basically all the same stuff that's on the other channel. But I can say there'll be no advertising. Um, and I'm currently publishing six videos a week. Um, so back to the topic at hand, words used in commerce, resident, okay. Uh, um, people inhabit a home is an abode. It's not a residence. Traffic is definitely commercial. You're traveling. Commissioner, motor vehicle, it's a private conveyance. You're not driving. You're traveling with your private property. A, a human, uh, you're not a human. You're a living soul, a man. Uh, liberty, people have freedom. Liberty is something you get from a ship. Uh, mail, people use the post or a postal address. Transportation, transportation's a punishment. <laughs> Passenger, is 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 a, you have a guest, a debtor. Well, uh, people don't do debts. Okay, uh, you can have a common law contract, but it's not a debt. Revenue, okay, that's all commercial. Income, you get compensation for labor. You don't get income. Employee. It's a compensation for labor contract. A spouse, you don't have a spouse, you have a wife. Uh, uh, children, you don't have children, you have a son or a daughter. You're, you're not married, you're joined in holy matrimony. Assets, you don't have assets. Assets is something they put on a balance sheet. You have property. Taxpayer, you're a non-taxpayer. 
Transportation is punishment in the English law. This punishment is inflicted by virtue of sundry statutes. It's unknown to the common law. It is part of the judgment or sentence of the court that the party shall be transported or sent into exile. That's uh, Bouvier's Law Dictionary, 1856 edition. Traffic, commerce, trade, sale, exchange of merchandise, bills, money, and the like. Bouvier's 1856 edition. Liability, another word. The quality or state of being legally obligated or accountable, legally responsible to another or to society, enforceable by civil remedy or criminal punishment, um, also termed legal responsibility, uh, and that's Black's Eighth in 1666. Notice the date. King Charles II signed the Sesta KV Trust Act. Thus, for the first time, we have a testamentary trust. Um, a trust for the dead things. That's why they want to presume you're dead into which the estate of the deceased is conveyed. At the same day this act was signed into law, the town of London burned. Burning records, maybe. It's under this type of trust that, that you, if you're a person or not classified, you're a fictional entity, if you legally died at the age of seven and your property was put into an estate and the government is the trustee. Canon 1170, a divine trust is the highest possible form of trust and unique is the only possible type of trust that can hold actual form rather than rights and use of form being property. Uh, in accordance with these canons, a divine trust can never be terminated. In accordance with these canons, every child or higher or spirit that is born from now until the end of time possesses a divine personality. Okay, so again, um, you don't have a child. You have sons and daughters. Um, through the creation of the divine trust or any other legal entity or claim. A child is a legal entity then. You think about it. Uh, another advertisement. Check out my other videos. Uh, Bankster Thieves 1, 2, and 3, Churchianity Series, Bankrupt Corporate So-Called Governments. I've got over 150 videos now. Uh, do it yourself how not to volunteer for the selective service of the draft. That's just another commercial transaction. Martial laws here. Do it yourself. No income tax. Do it yourself. No sales tax. Do it yourself. No tra uh, traffic stops. Do it yourself. Free mail. Do it yourself. Kangaroo courts. One, two, three, and four. All peoples have the right of self determination. By virtue of that right, they freely determine their political status and freely pursue their economic, social, and cultural development. This is found in Article 1, Clause 1 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Okay, so this is all coming from the UN, and that's the purpose of this. Because, uh, because uh, so I'm going to show you some stuff on the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Clause 3 says, uh, so you have the right to self-determination and the right to determine your political status. Uh, the state parties to the present covenant, including those having responsibility for the administration of non-governing and trust territories, shall promote the non-self-governing, shall promote the realization of the right of self-determination, and shall respect that right in conformity with the provisions of the Charter of the United Nations. Um, and this is uh, Article 2, Clause 1. Each state party with the present covenant undertakes to represent, to respect and ensure that all individuals within its territories, that's, that's corporations, and subject to this jurisdiction, the rights recognized to the present covenant without distinction of any kind, such as race, color, sex, language, religion, political or other opinion, national, social origin, property, birth, or other status. Okay, so these are all statuses, and this is Roman law. That's the important thing. Under Roman law, status is everything. Under common law, status is nothing. This is uh, Article 2, Clause 2. We're not already provided for by existing legislation or other measures. Each state party to the present covenant undertakes to take the necessary steps in accordance with the constitutional processes and with the provisions of the present covenant to adopt such laws or other measures as may be necessary to give effect to the rights recognized in the present covenant. Article 2, Clause 3. Um, each state party to the present covenant undertakes to ensure that any persons whose rights or freedoms as herein recognized or violated shall have an effective remedy, notwithstanding that the violation has been committed by persons acting in an official capacity. Gee, that sounds like violating your rights under the color of law. To ensure that any person claiming such a remedy shall have his right thereto determined by competent judicial, administrative, or legislative authorities, or by any other competent authority provided for by the legal system of the state, and to develop the possibilities of a judicial remedy, and then to ensure that the competent authority shall enforce such remedies when granted. And uh, that's Article 2, Clause 3. The state parties to the present covenant undertake to ensure the equal right of men and women. Article 3. 
Um, this is Article 4. And this is, see, this is all they're converting rights into privileges, what they're doing, because all of that stuff is found in the first ten amendments of the Constitution, actually. Uh, anyways, in the, in the, and they're basically in time of public emergency, so we can have some false flag operations and then create emergency, and then we can throw all this stuff out the window. And, and that's what essentially they're saying here. This is Article 4. Uh, if you want to read it, pause it and read it. Um, Anyways, no matter how nice they make their United Nations International Covenant, they always insert a, an escape clause. And so United, and, and if you read that they're using the same kind of terminologies that they're found in the Unidroit Treaty, too, in the Uniform Commercial Code. So this is all coming from the United Nations with their false flags. Matter of fact, the Unidroit Treaty even says that it's automatically implemented. And so, uh, so the UN goes and makes a change to the Unidroit and all those changes flow down. With their false flags and their agent provocateurs and their bankster thieves, it's easy to create any sort of emergency. They want to justify all the denial of the privileges they're calling rights. This is Article 18. Everyone shall have the right to freedom of co thought, conscience, and religion, and no one shall be subject to coercion, which would impair his freedom or to have or adopt a religion or belief of his choice. That's Article 18. So they're converting all sorts of rights into privileges, and then uh, that's uh, still Article 18. That was uh, Article or Clause 1 and 2. This is Clause 3 and 4. And then, um, uh, yeah, 3 is, say, may be subject only to such limitations. So they're putting strings on it right off the bat. Uh, the state parties to the present covenant undertake to have respect to the liberties of parents when applicable legal guardians to ensure religious and moral education of their children in conformity with their own convictions. Okay, so they're giving parents permission to educate their children. <laughs> um, this is Article 19. Um, everyone shall have the right to hold opinions. And so you notice how on CNBC they always say, in my opinion, okay? <laughs> Everyone shall have the right to freedom of expression. This right shall be freedom to seek, receive, impart information and ideas of all kinds, regardless of frontiers, either orally in writing or in print, in the form of art or through any other media of his choice. Okay, that's Article 19. Article 19 goes on. Uh, the exercise, it may therefore be subject to certain restrictions. Okay, so they're putting all sorts of strings on this stuff. And so, uh, and this is uh, Article 23. The family is the natural and fundamental group unit of society is entitled to protection by society and the state. The right of men and women of marriageable age to marry and to found a family shall be recognized. No marriage shall be entered into without the free and full consent of the intending spouses. And so uh, there's no arranged marriages. The uh, and so they're they're basically taking starting to mess with your bedroom now. What's going on in your bedroom is what they're doing, and so um, um, and uh, in the dissolution provision shall be made the necessary protection of any children. See, they always throw that as so that's all tied into Unidroit. And then uh, Article 24, every child shall have without any discrimination as to race, color, sex, language, religion, national or social origin, property or birth, the right to such marriage, uh, measures of protection as are required by his status as a minor. Okay, so it's all back to status in Roman law. Every child shall be registered immediately after birth and shall have a name. Okay, so that's that's registered as a slave is what it is. Every child has a right to acquire nationality. Uh, so if you have children, then they're slaves. And um, so I have a video, Don't Register Your Sons and Daughters. Uh, all persons are equal before the law and are entitled without any discrimination to the equal protection of the law. And so that's Article 26. Uh, without uh, uh, against discrimination on ground of race, color, sex, language, uh, religion, political or other opinion, national, social origin, property, birth, or other status. Civil law, Roman law, Roman civil law are convertible phrases meaning the same just system of jurisprudence, that rule of action which every particular nation, commonwealth, or city has established peculiarly for itself more properly called municipal law to distinguish it from the law of nature and from international law. That's Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. So they're all uh, interchangeable, and it's all municipal law. Even the, uh, the UN Charter is municipal law. This has been going on from the beginning of time. 
This is Deuteronomy 23, 19 to 20. Thou shalt lend, lot lend upon usury to thy brother, usury of money, usury of victory, usury of anything that is lent upon usury. Unto a stranger thou mayest lend upon usury, but unto thy brother thou mayest not lend upon usury. Commerce is the Roman cult and the United Nations. Um, and uh, is Roman law, I should say, and the United Nations and the Roman cult. You can make a common law contract and not be in commerce. If you talk about commerce in any way, you're saying that you're a U.S. citizen and you're one of the slaves. I see a lot of people use commercial words in their documents, reference the Uniform Commercial Code, talk about debtor, secured party creditor, all this other stuff, and, and they're just sabotaging themselves big time. Uh, copies of these documents can be found in my private group at Yahoo called Administering Your Public Servants. I have YouTube videos that are videos of private information shares that show these and other court citations that are available for a donation. Donations to support this work are appreciated. This last paragraph is in for the, all the revenue officers operate out there operating in their private capacity. Um, all the Satanist order followers. Uh, um, anyways, um, I prefer a gold or silver coin. And uh, but they can put their privileges and benefits up to rectal orifice because I prefer a gold or silver coin. But as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept their IOUs, Federal Reserve notes, PayPal gifts, checks, money orders, etc. Send me an email for particulars. Um, my blog is sovereigntyinternational.wordpress.com. My website is sovereigntyinternational.fyi. My email is engineerwin at yahoo. My YouTube profile is sovereign living and sovereignty international. Two of them now. I've got a Facebook community page, or had one till I deleted it due to censorship on the part of Facebook. I have a private group called Sovereignty International that's being deleted. It's hard to ban 17,000 people. It takes time. Um, and because I don't want Facebook to be uh, 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 profiting from my hard work. Um, Yahoo private group called Administering Your Public Servants and a U uh, Google private group called Administering Your Public Servants. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this. The most important thing that I can say regarding this is that you cannot use commercial terms or commercial terminology or anything about the Uniform Commercial Code other than to say that it's their requirement. Okay, You can say that it's their requirement and specify it has nothing to do with you and, and you're not going into commerce, but, uh, but that's about the extent of it. You cannot say that I'm the secured party creditor and that stuff that's like sticking the gun to your head and blowing your brains out. It's uh, it's completely sabotages you. I don't know. Maybe you want to be a slave, but I don't. And so uh, thanks for watching. I hope you get something out of it and spread the word. Thanks. Bye.